Hello YouTube and welcome to another computing related video. Today I'm going to show you this Acer Aspire M3600 that I was recently given. Everything you see before you, the keyboard, mouse, speakers, monitor and the computer itself, including this Kodak printer was given to me by a colleague from work who was simply going to take it all to the tip after they bought a new laptop. So I said I play with old computers and uh, offered to take it off of their hands. I'm going to wipe it first and foremost because I promised that I would do that to uh, erase all their settings. And I do have the recovery disks here it's in excellent condition there's hardly a piece of dust on there the printer looks like it's probably never been used there was still the shipping tape holding everything together it's a core 2 geo based machine with two gigabytes of ram and it's got windows vista the case has never been opened it still has the foil over the acer and Core 2 Duo logos that you normally would take off the plastic coating. Um, the, the stickers started to peel. I did try to stick it back down, but all I've done is ended up pulling a bit of the, um, the sticker off itself with my finger. And other than that, everything seems to be in total working order. So, um, without further ado, let's boot it up quickly and I'll just show you the system specifications. There's a user account, I do know the password, so I'm just going to stick that in for you and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so uh, I increased the DPI from 100 to 125% just so the text was a little bit bigger for us to be able to see what's exactly going on. Um, as you can see, the welcome center was still enabled. Most people just turned this off in the first instance. Um, there were some Windows sidebar elements, there you go, they're still loading in. Um, but what we're keen to look at here is the specifications. Now, it's running Windows Vista Home Premium. It's a Core 2 Duo E4500 at 2.2 gigahertz. It has two gigabytes of RAM and onboard graphics, which is an Intel 946GZ Express chipset. Um, we can go in more details and take a look at the full device manager roster. UAC controls for the win. Okay, so that's the uh, display driver. There's not much really to look at. Um, it's a dual core as, as described. And onboard sound is Realtek. There's a network card on board provided by Intel. There's no wireless support, so if I want to get this online for updates, etc., I've got to hardwire it into my router. Some of you who have watched previous videos will know that my router, quote unquote, used to be my, or was my iPhone with tethering wirelessly. But uh, in the last few weeks or so, I've finally upgraded to getting some fiber internet. Uh, I've got a 40 meg down with a 10 meg up, but that's by the by. The software that's installed is the general crapware that you get installed from the factory. Um, plus iTunes and OpenOffice has been installed along with the Kodak printer software. There's really nothing being used from the start menu, as you can see by the recently accessed functionality. Um, everything must have just been clicked from the start menu, uh, from the desktop, sorry, not the start menu. I'm not going to explore this person's personal files and documents and the person who owned the PC wasn't called Ben 
just in case you're wondering. Uh, the mouse and the keyboard and the speakers are all Acer branded and I'm going to show you those in more details now. Okay, so this is the keyboard. It's an Acer branded SK1688 model and it's a generic keyboard. What more can I say? It feels okay to type on. It makes a satisfying sound and it's fairly clean. There's a few bits of dust down the side of the keys but none showing excessive wear indicating that this PC is probably seldom used and hasn't been used for a lot of typing. The mouse, although it's Acer branded, is actually manufactured by Logitech and it's just a generic old school rollerball mouse and it's not very responsive because I think there's a bit of fluff on there which I'm going to clean up in the near future. The speakers are Acer branded as well and are powered by USB although they're not actual USB speakers uh, they plug into the standard three and a half millimeter jack on the back of the computer. I've cranked the volume up to max on the speakers and the volume up to max on the computer and I'm playing one of the sample sound files just to give you a quick indication of what the quality is like. I'm not going to play too much because uh, of copyright infringement. I would say they're of acceptable quality for a desktop for home, uh, nothing to scream home about but there's no static interference and they generally sound quite pleasant although not very loud. The monitor that was supplied is an Emprex LM1905. Its maximum resolution is 1440 by 900 and it's generally quite a nice monitor actually. It's uh, a very good display at quite a wide angle. Um, the controls around the back like power and menu buttons uh, it's a little bit tricky to to use but the picture quality is great so I think I'm going to uh, swap my 19 inch monitor for this one on a permanent basis. Okay and this is the uh, main nuts and bolts of the whole operation taking a look at the computer hardware itself as mentioned before it's an Acer Aspire M3600 and it's in fairly good shape in fact very good shape it's never been opened which I'll show you in a moment um, there's not a speck of dust on the inside of the CD-ROM drive there's none in the crevices of the card reader on the front and it's never been opened in nine and a half years so I'm going to be the very first to open it up with my trusty screwdriver and we'll take a look inside at what a computer looks like that's not been opened for over nine years around the back there's the usual array of ports PS2 keyboard and mouse serial parallel which is period correct I suppose for mid 2000s the onboard graphics firewire four USB ports onboard um, gigabit ethernet the array of audio outputs and inputs some possibility of expansion and the warranty stickers that are still totally fully intact Never, never broken. So I'm going to be the first to uh, peel it off. Let's take a look. I'm just noticing there's not much dust on the blades of the power supply fan either. There's a, a catch here. 
think she releases the that's got a bit of dust on it but that juts out I suppose and is going to get some on um, I need something a bit sharper than my fingernails to open that up and we get a kitchen knife security tag that's uh, separating as I'm chopping through it. There we go. Officially broken the seal. Ooh. Very clean. Okay, so what can we see? Let me move you a little bit closer and down. Try and get some better light. Okay, so I like these uh, quick release, I think, slots. Yeah. So you can just slide a drive in, I'm guessing, and hook it all in. I don't want to get my head in the way. But there's a little bit of dust on there. It's uh, surprisingly well cable managed as well. Um, Trying to get some. There we go. I say well cable managed. It's better than most I've seen. What's the power supply? The Delta Electronics Incorporated. Two hundred and fifty watt. 110 watts, sorry. Or 245. Well, there's a bunch of numbers on there. I'm going to uh, angle you up slightly for those that are interested. And I'll try and focus you. I'm using a desk lamp for a lighting in this little kitchen studio manufactured in 2007 January 3rd and the uh, output is 250 watts yes I was right the first time around I should stop reading all the other little numbers it's got a floppy drive header down there an Acer branded motherboard but it looks to be standard ATX form factor there's a couple of traditional PCI slots and some PCI Express so I could put a nice little graphics card in this and a wireless network adapter and uh, have, my, have a little bit of fun playing some older games perhaps with it. Um, it's got a single IDE channel as well. You can see the blue connector down in all the bunch of wires. And that's about all I can really tell you about it. And everything looks to be in order. I don't even think I'm going to bother cleaning this out with. Um, with the state it is in. I'm curious as to how they come off actually. Do they just unlock and lock? Okay, so hang on, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Bear with me, sorry. So there's little lock 
an unlock symbol so I'm guessing that's locked and that's unlocked so then you can release the drive um, I'm guessing you put the screws straight into the drive and then slide these in and they lock in place by sliding these over and I could put that to the test by taking the CD-ROM drive out perhaps but um, in fact yeah let's do that let's take the CD-ROM drive out go with Maverick So let's put it into the unlocked position and that should just slide out. Yes, it does. I don't want to get my head in the way, but you can see it's sliding back and forth to come out. Push it all the way in, click it back into lock position and it no longer moves. So I think this is a well constructed computer for home users and with quite good upgradeability options. So that's about wraps this up. What's the plans for this computer then? So I've got a spare Windows 7 upgrade which I can install on here then upgrade that to Windows 10. I need to see if Windows 10 will run on it first of all and then I'll probably donate it or give it to a friend who needs a better computer what else could I do with it I could stick a bit more RAM in there there's two one gig sticks in at the moment I would wage it would take two two gig sticks I need to have a look and see what the RAM is it'll probably max out given the age of the PC at four gig I'm going to stick a PCI Express graphics card in I've only got one at the moment that is um, DVI output only I don't have any DVI monitors, but I do have a DVI to HDMI converter, so I could try a different graphics card in it. Um, from experience, I think this graphics card that's on board will not have any drivers in Windows 10, so I may have to put a graphics card in anyway. I've got a wireless network card I could stick in there, but that's currently in a PC that's better than this, that's coming up in a future video. Look out for that, it's a Dell Optiplex 780. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe this video. Share it with all your nerdy friends and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot, good night.